your status as Nazi killers is still amateur. We all come here to see if you want to go pro. Today we're watching a scene from Inglorious Bastards. Buongiorno. Hey guys, I'm Adam, and this is a series where I give an actor's take on your favorite movie scenes. We're all tickled to hear you say that. Interesting fact, IMDb.com rates this film as the 71st greatest movie of all time, and out of those almost 1.5 million votes, men and women rate it virtually equally at 8.3 out of 10 stars. Grazie. Today we're going to watch the Gorlami scene. It's four and a half minutes. It has some laughs. And nobody dies. Woohoo, I guess. Quite frankly, watching Donnie beat Nazis to death is close we ever get to going to the movies. If you want to watch the scene without commentary, click the link in the description. Let's watch the scene. <laughs> this film was nominated for eight Oscars, including Best Director, Best Film, Best Editing, and Best Supporting Actor. It won Best Supporting Actor, or Christoph Waltz did. He's the guy here who plays Colonel Landa. Reportedly, Michael Caine saw this film in late 2009. He praised Waltz's performance and predicted he'd win the Oscar, which of course he did. Three years later, Christoph Waltz won the award again for Best Supporting Actor for the film Django Unchained, which was also written and directed by Tarantino. <laughs> Brad's facial expressions are hilarious in this scene. Watch them even when he's not the focus of the shot. Apparently less than 50% of this film is in English. Reportedly, apparently 28% is in French, 22% is in German. Then you have this part, which is Italian. <laughs> when I tell people I'm an actor, the most common first response I get is literally, can you cry? For some reason, that's put on this pedestal of this ultimate achievability in acting. Maybe there's some merit to it. I'll tell you, though, what's more impressive than crying is this. Laughing so hard that you cry. I've never seen another actor do it convincingly. Christoph Waltz is the only one right here. <laughs> Vergeben Sie mir, gnädiges Fräulein, ich wollte mich nicht über Ihren Glück lustig machen. Es ist nur Bergsteigen. Jetzt bin ich aber neugierig. Was könnte Sie zu einem dermaßen tollkühnen Unterfangen getrieben haben? All right, we'll pause it there. The most interesting thing about this scene from an acting perspective, in my opinion, is that it brings up what I think is one of the most foundational questions in all of acting theory. The question is, is it an actor's job to feel? Now... There are some coaches, some actors, some books, some schools that say, yes, it's absolutely an actor's job to feel. You're representing life. And their theory revolves around finding ways to conjure up true feeling in the actor. In contrast, there are other coaches, actors, books, and schools that say, no, it's not the actor's job to feel. You can't control your emotions. Forget that. And their theory is completely different. Now, there's no consensus on this in American acting from my experience. Most actors and coaches seem to believe in both. They seem to believe in one part feeling and one part doing. But at the highest level, these ideas literally aren't compatible and will change the theory and will change the coaching and will change the prep and will change the method of an actor. That's why I think it's one of the most important questions because it cuts to the foundation of how an actor does what they do. Now, the reason that the scene brings up this idea so clearly is that you have four actors and in the case of the movie, four characters who you know are feeling really nervous, or at least you would imagine they would be. And why do we know that? Well, if they succeed in their mission here, what happens? They kill Hitler, they end the war. If they fail, they're killed and may be tortured. So the stakes could not be higher. And so for the rest of the scene, I would say, pay attention to that. What are the actors doing? What are they feeling? Do they look nervous? Why or why not? Do you buy it? Is that how you think this scene should be played? And also, of these four characters, who is your favorite and how they play the scene? And if I may make one small recommendation, pay attention to the guy on the far side. His name's the Coco. What he does is pretty interesting. All right, back to the scene. 
Der Gips ist so frisch wie mein alter Onkel Gustav. Wann haben Sie denn diesen Berg bestiegen? Gestern Nacht? Scharfes Auge, Oberst. Es ist gestern Vormittag passiert. Und wo genau in Paris ist dieser Berg? In one interview, Brad Pitt called this film a gift. He said it fell into his lap. Tarantino apparently called him, flew out to France, met with him. They drank a bunch of wine. They talked about the film. Brad agreed to do it, came out of nowhere, and in three months they were shooting. Es sind Freunde aus Italien. Dies hier ist der hervorragende Sensationsdarsteller Enzo Gorlon. Ein sehr talentierter Kameramann, Antonio Margheriti und Antonios Kameraassistent Dominique de Cocco. So this middle guy is called the Bear Jew. He's played by an actor named Eli Roth. Guess who was originally offered the role? Adam Sandler. Tarantino actually wrote the role for Sandler, but Sandler had to decline due to some other obligations and some scheduling conflicts with another film. Grazie. Gorlomi? Lo pronuncio correttamente? Sì, corretto. Gorlomi? Per cortesia, me lo ripeti ancora. Gorlomi. Mi scusi con me? Gorlomi. Ancora una volta. Gorlomi. Come si chiama lei? Antonio Margareti. Ancora? Margareti. Un'altra volta, ma adesso vorrei proprio sentire la musica delle parole. Margareti. Margariti. E lei? Dominic de Coco. Come? Dominic de Coco. Bravo. Bravo. Ich glaube, meine Kamerafreunde müssen ihre Plätze finden. Lasciatemi vedere i vostri biglietti. So you see this golden medal that Colonel Landon's wearing right where his necktie is? That is actually the Knight's Cross of the War Merit Cross. It was an actual award created by Hitler in 1939. This version specifically, which is gold and has swords, was given to soldiers for exceptional service that was, quote, not in direct connection with combat. So very historical. That's the episode today. One last question. Who did you like the most in that scene and why? Leave a comment and let me know. I would love to hear your perspective. In the show notes, I wrote who my favorite character was, and I've also included a handful of other awesome facts about the movie. So check those out as well. Lastly, if you have any questions, comments, ideas, or scenes you want me to feature, leave those in the comments too. I would love to hear what you want and bring it to you. Thanks for joining me today. See you next time. I'm sure this mission of yours has a commanding officer. A general. Mm, I'm betting for... OSS would be my guess. Ooh, that's a bingo! <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo? You just say bingo. Bingo! How fun! <laughs> <laughs>